What is up, Bright More Kids? Today, we're continuing our series called Epic Fail. We're learning from some of the major mistakes of King Saul. Have you ever been angry? What is something that makes you mad? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Yep, those are good too. Well, I can imagine those things probably would have made you really upset, or they would have made me upset as well. Well, today we're going to learn what to do when we get angry. So let's check back in and see if our trick shot expert is doing well today. Hey everyone, it's me, Jordan. You know, I've been trying for the last several weeks to get the perfect trick shot, and it hasn't worked out that well for me. So I made a big decision. Since things aren't going too well on my own, I decided that I need a coach. That's right. I called the guy who has millions of followers and is known as the best trick shot coach in the world. But that guy wasn't available. So instead, I got stuck with, uh, excuse me, I'm looking for a Jordan. This guy. Well, hi there. My name is Zeke Runyon. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Well, why the gloomy face, young man? Don't you know who you have here as a coach? Not really. Well, let me tell you. I just happen to be the world record holder for the trick shot that you're attempting today. Really? That's cool. When did you set the record? Back in 1929. 1929? It's like a hundred years ago. I had no clue you were that old. Yeah, I know. I don't really look it, but that's because I eat a steady diet of horseradish and beet juice. Ew, that sounds nasty. Hey, don't knock it till you try it. Now, are you ready to attempt the dangling donut divide? Is that what the shot is called? Well, what else would you call it when you're trying to throw a ping pong ball through a donut that's swinging back and forth in a tree? Well, I guess that's what I would call it. You bet you would. Now, I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna give you some pointers. Okay, sounds good. All right, now, take your first shot. Well, that wasn't even close. Gee, thanks. How about you coach me on how to do it better? Well, if it were me, I'd try to get the ball through the hole. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, do it then. And you better do it quick before the squirrels come and eat your donut. Squirrels love donuts. Okay, I'm really going to focus on this one. Squirrel! Why did you do that? You made me miss. Well, I, I, I thought there was a squirrel on your head. Turns out it was just your haircut. <laughs> oh, now you're making fun of my hair. You're supposed to be coaching me. And you're supposed to be making that shot. You're not doing a very good job. How am I supposed to do a good job with you interrupting me all the time? Well, there's no reason to get all fussy and mad about it. Hey, and don't look now, but the squirrel just ate your donut. That's it, I quit. This whole thing is making me mad. Well, I can see that. You're reminding me of King Saul. Huh? Well, he had a bit of a temper as well. There was a time in the Bible when he let his anger get control of him. And boy, it was not pretty. Let me guess, it was an epic fail? It sure was. His anger led him to say and do things that hurt himself and everybody around him. Oh, I don't want to do that. Of course you don't. And you don't have to. You just need to get control of your temper and don't let anger control you. Will do. You know, it's probably best for the kids to get into their lesson. They're going to learn how to not follow King Saul's example. Good idea. How about you and I set this thing back up and you give it another try? That's a great idea. This one didn't work out so well, but the next one, dude, it's gonna be perfect. See ya. There are many ways to handle anger. You can scream and yell, you can throw things, you can even go as far as hurting someone else. Sometimes you may actually want to hurt someone else if they are the person that made you really angry. That would be an epic fail. None of those responses are how God wants us to handle our anger. We are going to learn all about what happened when King Saul had an epic fail, when he let his anger gain control of him. But right now, it's time to find out 
What you gotta know? Hey there, cool cats. I'm Peggy Sue, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're talking about anger. So, anytime someone asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. Don't be a fool. Always keep your cool. <clears throat> I am not happy right now. What's going on, Dolly? My friend Judy left her tank in the schoolyard and we were meant to have a ball, but she went and flipped her lid. And now all the cats are stuck with the royal shaft. I tell you, she is cruising for a bruising and I'm gonna give her a shiner. Little lady, I haven't a clue what you just said, but you need to take a breath. Your anger is getting a little out of control. You need to get a handle on it before you do something you regret. But I'm just so mad. Well, everyone gets mad sometimes. That's just normal, but we have to learn to keep our cool. Don't let anger control you. You're right, I feel much better now. I'm glad I got that under control. Me too. We can never let anger control us. We've gotta keep our cool. So, anytime someone asks you, what you gotta know, you tell them. Don't be a fool, always keep your cool. And that is what you gotta know. I'm Peggy Sue saying, see you later alligator. <laughs> Hey, 1 Samuel 20 is where we're gonna be today. I want you to open up your Bibles if you have it. Just have it on hand, you can always pause the video. Today's Bible story continues to focus on King Saul. His jealousy of David led him to an ethic fail last time, and surely he learned his lesson, right? He's decided to change his attitude, right? <gasps> no. King Saul continued to be jealous of David and was determined to kill him. Oh, that's terrible, wow. Kill him and continue to. David approached Saul's son, Jonathan, for help. And David told Jonathan, your father wants to kill me. Jonathan said, no, he wouldn't do that. I would never let him hurt you. And David said, well, tomorrow, I'm supposed to be at the king's court for a feast. I will hide out instead of coming to the feast. You let me know how your father reacts to me not being there. Jonathan's like, okay, yeah, absolutely, let's do it. David knew that King Saul was so angry with him that he would likely try to kill him again, not just with a spear that first time. So the next day, the feast took place in the king's court, and Saul noticed that David was not sitting in his assigned seat. Uh-oh. King Saul asked Jonathan, why is David's seat empty? He began to get upset because he had hope David would be there so that he could kill him. Jonathan answered to King Saul, David is not here. He is in Bethlehem visiting his family for an important sacrifice. Saul immediately knew Jonathan was not telling him the truth. He got very angry and completely lost his temper. Saul screamed at the top of his lungs, you son of a worthless woman. Remember, Jonathan was King Saul's son, so he was calling his own wife worthless. Saul was so angry. Can you imagine how much that would have hurt those around him and his, the wife's feelings? How much do you think it hurt Jonathan's feelings that here this anger is now put on him? If it wasn't enough that King Saul had those horrible things and said those things and felt those things, he let his anger even get more control over him. He stood up and hurled a spear towards Jonathan, his own son. He was angry that he tried to hurt his own son. God helped Jonathan just like God helped David escape. And he ran to warn David, do not come, you are right. King Saul does wanna kill you, he's after you. After all, King Saul was no longer a godly leader. He had walked away from being under God's protection and anointing. He was an angry, jealous king who was determined to kill David. Wow, an epic fail. He reigned as king, was turning out to be terrible. When you let your anger control you, it causes pain and damage to so many people. In this lesson, the rest of today, that's what we're taking, taking at, we're looking, that's what we're gonna be looking at. You need to control your anger and never lose your temper. And there's gonna be times where you feel like you can't control it, but there are ways to do it. God gives us helpful tools, but also for us 
Hitting someone is never an option. You see, King Saul is a bad example. And so instead of following in his footsteps, let's take some hints today from what we're gonna talk about and actually walk the way that God would want us to walk when we're really angry. Okay, here we go. Let's jump into talking more about how not to be like King Saul when it comes to anger. We're learning about the many struggles of anger. We get angry at times, or at least I know I have. How many of you have ever gotten angry at a brother or your sister? Yeah? I have two sisters, and when I was growing up, there was just a couple different times that they did something that made me so angry that I had a response that was not helpful. I know that there was one time where I said some words to my sister that were unkind and not um, honoring righteous words because I got so angry. I didn't hit her. I didn't scream. I just yelled out to her these words. And I remember instantly feeling so upset, not about my situation anymore, but that I said something so hurtful to her because I saw her response and how it affected her. And then there was another time where I had some friends and I got angry at my friends. I got angry at a situation that was going on and I lost it. And I just continued just to talk and go, how dare you think that way? How dare you da da da? I don't even know why you would think this way because it was something that they had said to me. And I just remember how my anger took over what I was thinking and I was saying, have you ever done that? Have you ever gotten so angry that you punch a wall? Have you ever gotten so angry that you punch your sibling or you hit your sibling because that anger has just bubbled up so big and it's such a cloud of anger that you don't know what else to do? Well, we don't wanna stay like that. We can't stay like that. We shouldn't stay like that. There are ways for us to change our thoughts. There are ways for us to change our actions. And God has told us so many times in the Bible what we should be thinking on, what we should be doing. And I will tell you, a lot of the time, if our thoughts change, so does then that response with our anger. Anger is not a sin. It's true. Anger itself is not a sin. It's an emotion. God created us to have emotions. Anger is an emotion just like happiness is an emotion. Anger is an emotion just like sadness is an emotion. It is not a sin to be angry any more than it is a sin to be happy. How do I know? Because the Bible says in Psalms 4, 4, in your anger, do not sin. That must mean that it is impossible to be angry and not sin. So I say one thing with me, when I start to get a little bit hungry, I notice sometimes I get a little bit more angry. And right now I'm pretty hungry. So it's like, Mr. Devante, could you bring me a snack or something? Ooh, yeah, popcorn. Some, some popcorn. Oh, wow, no. Oh, oh what the? my goodness, I'm what so are you? sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was the only snack that I packed today, and it's all, all of the, are you serious? Ugh. No, I can pick it up, don't worry. Now I'm gonna be hungry all day, just, I can't believe you did that, you, ugh, just a loser. Why would you do that? Guys. Don't worry, I'm not actually upset with Mr. Devante. It was all planned. I wanted you to see the difference between being angry and letting anger control over you. Did you notice that at the beginning I was angry, but I was patient? I didn't lose control until later when I began yelling at him and I called him a mean name. That's when my anger gained control over me and it became sin. You see, getting angry is not a sin, but... Letting anger control me is a sin. Anger isn't, but letting it control us is. You see, Mr. Connor switched over at that last minute and it changed, right? We have all seen people lose control and, yet, and yell or done something that they shouldn't have to hurt someone as sadly as that is, I hope we haven't, but really we have. When you lose control and let your anger gain control over you, you end up doing things that you wish you never would have done. 
and saying things that you wish you never would have said and hurting people you wish you had never hurt. And sometimes our anger is so clouding on us, we don't even feel those emotions at first. We're just so angry. But ultimately, it does hurt people. When we lose control, it becomes a sin. Saul allowed his anger to control him. He completely lost all his temper. King Saul became someone who let it just take over to the point that he was willing to even hurt his own son. Even worse than that, his anger led him to continue to not forgive. That's huge. Not forgiving, not loving, not being like Jesus tells us to be. It's, it'll change your life. It'll make you hard. You see, King Saul, he lost the respect of the people because of what he did. And he paid a high price for his angry outburst. So what should you do when you get angry? Do you have a choice? Do you have to lose control? Well, you sure don't, because guess what? You have a choice. Instead, this is what you should do. I must learn to control my anger. You don't have to lose control. You can control your anger. You might say, but I can't control my anger. It's just too much for me to handle. That may be true, but God can help you handle it. You see, our anger is like a hand grenade. Have you ever heard of a hand grenade? By itself, just sitting there, it's pretty harmless. But if I were to pull the pin, within moments, it would explode and do a whole lot of damage. It could even kill a person. Anger is a lot like a hand grenade. When you get angry and lose control, you explode all over everyone around you, hurting people in the process. What you have to do when you get angry is not pull the pin. Don't allow that anger to become sin by losing control. When you're angry, stop and pray and ask God to help you. Take some deep breaths and pray while you do it. Then God can come in, in the scene and help you handle your anger before you lose control, explode and hurt those around you with your words and actions. That's it, you're good, you're good, you're, oh, hey there everybody. My name is Bill Dozer. I'm the head contractor on this here construction site. I know everything there is to know about building. Not everything. What was that? Relax, it's just me. Oh, Jaden, you scared me. Everybody, this is my apprentice, Jaden. He's learning how to be a world-class contractor like me. Something like that. Anyway, today's project is one of my specialties. We will be building the Powerverse. Oh, no. What do you mean, oh, no? I mean, oh, no. I know exactly what is about to happen. Jaden, I have no idea what... Oh, boy, this happens every time we try to build the Powerverse. My boss, Bill, sure is a dozer. Huh, good one, me. Anyway, Bill has narcolepsy, which means he falls asleep out of nowhere. I need your help to wake him up. On the count of three, shout, wake up, Bill. Ready? One, two, three. Wake up, Bill. Get away, little froggies. Oh, oh, <laughs> seems like I must have dozed off. <laughs> Get it? Dozed, Bill, dozer. <laughs> Good one, Bill, but, um, never mind. We have got to get moving with this project. You are so right. Boys and girls, we have all the building blocks gathered for this power verse. Only problem is, they are in the wrong order. Maybe you can help us get these blocks in the right order and help build the power verse. That's a great idea. Let's see what we're working with. Bring in the crane. Aha, here they are. Let's see. Lord and wait patiently. Hmm. Do you think that's the first block? No way, sir. That makes no sense. Ah, you're right. Next. For him to act. How about this one? Kids, what do you think? Yeah, I don't think that's it either. Be still in thee. Hey, that could be the first one. You think that's right? Yeah, me too. All right, bring it over. All right, next. 
we just placed down a block that says, be still in thee. So what do we need to be still in? Be still in the Lord? What? I don't think that's right. Okay, um, uh, be still in the for him to act? No way, boss. Aha, be still in the Psalm 37, seven. Really, Bill? Yeah, I don't think so. Well, this must be it then. Okay, be still in the presence of the what? I think I know this one, boss. I think it's the presence of the Lord. I think you're right. First block it is. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently. Huh, what comes next? I think they're right for him to act. Ah, only one block left. And this one has to be the scripture reference. We did it! <laughs> Great job, everyone. Now, it's time for my team to turn these blocks into a home. Come on, boys, bring it in! And there we have it. Amazing! Now, let's stand together and say the power verse on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Psalm 37, seven. Great job, everyone, you may have a seat. Well, Jaden, we've done it again. I can't believe we... Not again. Come on, kids, help me out. On the count of three. One, two, three, wake up, Bill. Unicorns and cheesecake. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, oh. sorry. Everyone, uh, I guess we better get going. Uh, we got another project to get to. Until next time, I'm Bill Dozer. And I'm Jaden. See ya! Welcome, children, to our Rewind Review. This is where we go back, we look through the lesson, and we figure out what we talked about. Okay. And are you ready to get started? I'm ready. Okay, are you ready to get started? You ready? Okay, let's go. Our first question is, what you gotta know? <gasps> I won't lose my something, I will stay cool. I won't lose my temper, I won't lose my... It rhymes with cool. Don't be a blank. Fool. Yes. Don't be a fool. Don't lose your cool. Or, yeah. Always keep your cool. Always keep your cool. Don't be a fool. Always keep your cool. Oh, I can sing it. Don't, Don't be, be a, a fool. fool. Always keep it cool. Do, 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 do. Okay, next question. In our Bible story today, what did David think King Saul wanted to do to him? Wanted to kill him. Yep, and he was correct in mm -hmm. that thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Who told David he would warn him if King Saul was going to kill him? His best friend named Jonathan. Yes, that is correct. Where did Jonathan tell King Saul that David was instead of at the feast? Um, with his family, specifically doing um, a sacrifice. Uh, they would have specific celebrations and things they would do, and that he was doing it with his family. In what city? <gasps> the town of David, Bethlehem, yes. where Jesus was born. Yes, she gave us a lot of backstory. Awesome. I didn't necessarily ask for it, but I'm oh. glad she said it, though. Sorry. It was all correct. No, no, don't be sorry, it was great. <laughs> all right, next question. What did King Saul throw at Jonathan? 
Is, was it a spear? Yes. It's a spear, but like both times, David and to Jonathan, it was spears. Okay. Yes. And did the spear hit Jonathan? I mean, he was alive afterwards, so I'd say no. Correct. Okay. Maybe Ooh. like, maybe it like tipped, hit his toe. No. Ooh. He missed. Okay. Toes are still important. True. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> according to our lesson today, anger is not a blink. Sin. Correct. According to, according to our lesson today, letting anger blink me is a sin. Control us. Yes. Get all clouded over. Yeah. Okay. According to our lesson today, this is our second to last question, okay. I must learn to control my blink. Anger? Correct. If oh. it wasn't clear, control your anger. In control of you is a sin. Yes. Okay. This is our last question. Okay. Where was our power verse found? It's one that we've had the whole entire month. Mm -hmm. It's in Psalms. Yeah. Um, which, did you know that David wrote a lot in Psalms? It's kind of cool. Um, okay, funny trail, so sorry. Psalms 37.7. Yes, that is correct. Cool. Those are all of our questions for our Rewind Review. <laughs> See ya. Well, that was our last video in our epic fail series. We learned about being angry, how it's not a sin, but being controlled by it is. So I hope you take that with you and we will see you next time.